Well, time to punish myself. Let's see what's going on. Oh, I gotta remember to tell people they gotta go to Teespring to check out these shirts because something's going on with YouTube. I don't know. They're not fixing it. This is still going on? Unreal. I swear, anytime these people claim something is a bombshell, you can guarantee it's gonna be nonsense. Another bombshell. 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 So I get on today and I see that the January 6th hearings are still going on and they supposedly had this star witness that was gonna drop bombshells. Her name is Cassidy Hutchinson and she's the former special assistant to the president. So there's a few bullet points that I wanna go over about her testimony that I'll go over quickly, but first I want to address the biggest load of blue and on secondhand tall tale bullshit that she spewed. But first, give me 30 seconds to tell you about this free silver coin offer from Nova Gold. With inflation running at 8.5%, its highest rate for 40 years, do you really need uncertainty? Being able to sleep at night knowing your investments aren't going to crash is worth its weight in gold. And this month, for every cash deal above 20K, you'll get an incredible three ounce silver American version virtue coin completely free as a thank you so call 877-646-5347 now to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com that's noblegoldinvestments.com you can find that link in the description and make sure to tell them drone tech sent you hutchinson when you returned to the white house in the motorcade after the president's speech where did you go when I returned to the White House, I walked upstairs towards the Chief of Staff's office, and I noticed Mr. Renato lingering outside of the office. Once we had made eye contact, he quickly waved me to go into his office, which was just across the hall from mine. When I went in, he shut the door, and I noticed Bobby Angle, who is the head of Mr. Trump's security detail, sitting in a chair, just looking somewhat discombobulated and a little lost. Um, and I, I looked at Tony, and he had said, did you effing hear what happened in the Beast? I said, no, Tony, I, I just got back. What happened? The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president. You're right. Take me up to the Capitol now. To which Bobby responded, sir, we have to go back to the West Wing. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engle grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Engle. And Mr. when Mr. Renato had recounted this story to me, he had motioned towards his clavicles. Excuse me, what? I don't believe you. And even if it were true, I don't care. Inflation is at 8.6%. Gas is over $5 a gallon on the low end. People can't get regularly needed items. Energy prices are skyrocketing. Biden is at war with his own country's energy independence, and he's having a cognitive meltdown to bring this all together into a mushroom cloud of failure. But yeah, Trump yelled at his driver, ooh. For one, there's nobody on that clown panel that are gonna ask a single critical question in cross-examination of this secondhand story. If if they were, they would ask how Trump sitting in the back of this vehicle could somehow make his way past the two security guards that are facing him and up close enough to actually move the steering wheel. There's a lot of space there between where Trump is sitting and the driver. Also, why would Trump potentially cause an accident that could kill him? It seems unlikely and way more likely that somebody is either embellishing or just outright lying. Both things that we've seen in abundance during this entire Kabuki theater mindfuck. Looking at politicals, driving the day on Hutchinson's theatrical debut, it's all a bunch of subterfuge nothing that will result in nothing and only serves to distract from the total disaster that the Democrats and Joe Biden are presiding over. Let's see here, we have burning documents. Ooh, sounds devious, but is actually pretty common and not a crime, at least based on what Hillary Clinton did, which we were told was totally normal and mocked for even asking why. Next is violence. Which we already know is a secondhand story that doesn't add up and and even if it did, who gives a shit? There's been violence at every Republican inauguration since the year 2000 from Democrats because they declared those elections were stolen and illegitimate. We won that election. Al Gore won the election. Al Gore was elected president of the United States. Right. This wasn't counted. You know it. I know it. They know it. 
We won that election. There is overwhelming evidence that George W. Bush did not win this election. Do you think Republicans stole that election? In 2000, I wish the United States Supreme Court had let them finish counting the votes. The Supreme Court denied the actual and accurate counting of the votes of Florida. If Katherine Harris, Jeb Bush, Jim Baker, and the Supreme Court hadn't tampered with the results, Al Gore would be president. An election has been stolen, robbed. It wasn't a fair process. It wasn't a neutral process. It was a process that was rigged against us. Can, can we talk about that? No? Uh, okay. Ooh, this one must be spicy. Illegal plan. What's this plan? Supposedly, Trump and the guy from Fifth Element had a secret plan to have alternate electors cast votes for Trump. It never actually happened, so this is all hypothetical and completely pointless, especially since Democrats, Hollywood, and their media already did this when Trump won in 2015. USA Today reports that some Electoral College members are being pressured to change their votes. Left-wing activists now resorting to threats of violence against electoral college voters, electors in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, and Texas, of all the, well, many of them, have reported receiving death threats after Clinton supporters posted their personal information on social media. By voting your conscience, you and other brave Republican electors can give the House of Representatives the option to select a qualified candidate for the presidency. I stand with you. I stand with you. I stand with you. I stand with you in support and solidarity with conservatives, independents, and liberals. And all citizens of the United States. The American people trust that your voice speaks for us all. And that you, you will make yourself heard through the constitutional responsibility granted to you by Alexander Hamilton himself. What is evident is that Donald Trump lacks more than the qualifications to be president. He lacks the necessary stability. Can, can we talk about that? No? Uh, okay. It's just amazing how brazenly they gaslight us. Well, I got a thing. So if you enjoyed this, please share, hit that like button, and leave a comment to let us all know what you think about these January 6th con artists. Thanks a lot. See you on the next one.